Welcome to the Vigor Life Podcast, a source of inspiration, lessons, stories, skill sets, mindsets, and strategies to invigorate and expand all areas of your life. Let's go. What is going on? <clears throat> I'm going to clear my Jared Levert voice real quick. Uh, Coach Luca back here with the Vigor Life Podcast. And um, today, I got my hat on, obviously, because, you know, it's like that midday uh, gym time where there's nobody really here. And uh, you know me, I'm not I'm not turning the heat on, right? We 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 warm up manually. <laughs> so, uh, but today, man, today is a special is a special show, and, and because I'm going to be talking about something that is uh, not only just near and dear to my heart, but it's what I do. And uh, you know, people take this uh, word, I don't know, and then kind of smother it. But it's coaching, right? So I'm going to talk about the twelve principles of coaching excellence in coaching. You know, uh, like I said, when you say, hey, I'm a coach or I'm coaching, it can mean a lot of things to people. And I think there's coaching in many areas of life. I think I think what I'm going to talk about today carries over to anywhere. Right. If you're if you're doing coaching in any realm uh, with business, nutrition, training, uh, marketing, like anything, um, these principles will matter. I also think they're very important principles, just human communication. I think a lot of times, you know, you're coaching when you don't even think that you are. You know, to your kids, to a colleague, to a friend, um, to a uh, to maybe even a, a mentor or higher up or whatever it may be, right? It's always this two way street, um, and and there is a, you know, the, uh, the, there's a great well, there's a lot of great books. You know, I'm gonna always mention books, but you know, coactive coaching or motivational interview, interviewing where it, it talks about how like coaching is a two way street, right? It's not telling people stuff, um, but I think it is one of the like especially if you're in fitness, nutrition, lifestyle change um, industry, this is so important and so key. And I don't believe you ever stop learning how to become a better coach, just like you don't ever stop and shouldn't stop becoming a better communicator. Um, you know, and with that said, because like I said, it's 12 principles. Uh, I got a couple of notes here and whatnot, but you know, I'm, I'm going to go in on some of them a little more, some of them a little less. But ask yourself the question of, you know, as I'm going through this to, you know, which one do you think you need to work on more? Uh, and, and as I was writing them out, you know, I'm like, OK, I could, I could do better in this. You know, what are the resources um, that, I, that I need to get? Who are the people I need to reach out to? Who do I need to uh, shadow or intern under? Which coach I need to hire? Like, seriously, I'm, I'm always looking at, you know, what are what's the white space? What's the missing link? Uh, what could I improve? Uh, and, and it never ends. You know, that's the cool thing about it. Like this is so curiosity driven that it never ends. Uh, so let's let's get going. Let's start with principle number one, which is uh, know, do and coach. Right. So here's the thing. Like what, right right now, there's a lot of people that know stuff, uh, but it's like they don't necessarily do it. So you got to have all three. And, and let me explain all three. Like knowing is actually knowing the information. Right to be able to teach doing means that you're doing it yourself, right? No, doing it means that you you're doing it yourself. And for me, what's important is like been there, done that, done that and still doing it. Right. Uh, you, you know, whether it's like, Oh, well, yeah, I used to do that 10 years ago. It's like, all right, well, you know, times have changed a lot. You got to be on top of, uh, on top of these things. So the whole doing part for me has been there, done that, still doing it. Uh, and on the coaching part, like, having the knowledge, experience, and success of coaching others to it, right? So if we talk about, uh, you know, sports performance or fat loss, it's like the knowledge, experience, and success of coaching other people uh, in the past to get the result. Like that's very, very important. Now, obviously, you always got to start somewhere. But, uh, you know, if you read a book and are not doing something yourself and not coaching and teaching others that are succeeding, you know, that is not coaching excellence, right? It's not coaching excellence. And you can start coaching, I mean, at any point in time. It's like, I, I remember I was still playing pro basketball and, you know, I was coaching people for, for free or for like literally no, no shit, like $3 a session when I was still in Slovenia um, to get the experience, to, you know, to be get, able to start ranking in the hours of coaching. Um, so that's a huge part, right? It's like no do and coach. There's three elements to it, and if you're not doing all those three, and, and 
I would say getting deliberate practice in all those three, you know, there, there's something that you might want to check yourself on. Um, number two is teach and communicate. And here's the thing. There's a wide range of communication styles. And, and I'll say this, you know, in, in fitness, you get this a lot because uh, or anywhere really, but it, it's kind of like very prevalent. Like if you're teaching an exercise, right, it's some people are more kinesthetic. So they go by touch. Some people are more visual. I'd say a lot of people are visual and then some are auditory. So like explaining it and learning how to uh, recognize what type of learner somebody is and to be able to effectively communicate with them in that way is very important. What, there's a tendency to, to, to go like, ah, oh, man, they don't get it. And, and rather than finding a way to help them get it, you know, you, you think that it's their problem or it's their mistake. But in reality, you know, the question is like, hey, how can I become a better communicator? And it might be as simple as like, you know, uh, even when training groups, for instance, uh, I might correct somebody and give them a verbal cue. Like, hey, I want you to, you know, feel the whole foot, right? Feel the whole foot. And, and maybe they don't, they won't, um, they won't get that. And I'll give them a kinesthetic cue or, you know, uh, push my finger through right in the middle of their foot and go like, hey, I want you to push through this area right into the ground. Okay, now push the ground away, right? So it, and, and the thing is, I might show them a wrong or right. So they be, now it's very visual, right? So I might be like, this is wrong and this is right. And they'll go like, oh, okay, cool. I get it. Or maybe, like I said, where you run fingers down her spine and go like, hey, lengthen the spine, right? Those are all different cues. And, you know, one of them may not work. It might work for, you know, Susie, but it doesn't work for Jen, right? Because they're different learners. And, and that goes for not just, like I said, uh, teaching exercise or anything like that. It goes uh, as far as like communication as well, which is why I love stories. I love uh, analogies and similes and things like that. And actually learning those, right? Like uh, I have a whole book of similes and analogies and things like that that I go into and, and look up stuff because it gives my mind things to work with that makes me better explain, right? And breaking things down to like very real world. Um, but just remember that, that there's a lot of different ways to communicate. Like the more you learn different ways, the easier it is for you to flow through stuff and, and help people understand, uh, what you're trying to help them do. Right. Number three is controlling information transfer. Now this goes really, really close in hand with, uh, the previous point that I made, but, and I, I used to, you know, suck at this in, in certain aspects and why because I wanted to just you know I, I'm so excited about sharing knowledge when I learn stuff right like I'll read a book I come in a you know or I go through a course I come in a uh, the gym and I'm like instantly like you know teaching the team and going through stuff and doing webinars and whatever I can so what I used to do in the past is um is you know try to explain to clients in this very scientific way because I because that's what I learned uh about doing something and they'd be like oh okay you know <laughs> not really getting it uh, because I was essentially just trying to prove that I'm smart. Uh, but, you know, th that's what I mean by by uh, controlling information transfer is is really that. You know, you 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 make it as simple to understand as possible. Right. You, like if, if I'm going to if I'm going to talk about a nutritional strategy and go like, hey, here's some examples of the foods you told me that you like that, you know, would fit with what we're trying to do. Uh, and they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense versus, well, you know, this is what happens post-workout. We want to raise insulin and we want to do this. And, you know, and you, you start getting really techie and, and, uh, and, and breaking down stuff in, in too, too much geek mode. Uh, and then you lose them. Right. And remember that most people are already overwhelmed, at least when, you know, when it comes to fitness and nutrition, most people don't need more complicated things because they're already overwhelmed with the amount of change that's happening in their lives. So, trying to explain stuff in, you know, what, you know, what happens, uh, uh, biochemically and, 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 uh, you know, with hormones and chemicals in your body, post-workout, during work, like all these different things, you know, maybe somewhere down the line when they're more experienced and they start, you know, geeking out about it too. Great. But for majority of people, you know, you want to break it down as simple as possible. And it's the same thing with coaching. You know, once I started like traveling and, and, you know, over a decade ago, and studying the best coaches in the world, like what really uh, kind of threw me off and surprised me is they would say very little, right? And the thing is, honestly, they would just say as little as needed, 
right? It's almost the minimal effective dose of communication. Um, and for somebody that likes to talk a lot, moi, it's probably why obviously I'm also doing a podcast. <laughs> it That was tough. You know, that was tough. It's still something I deal with. I still have to consciously catch myself. Um, but it's very important. Like if I can say one or two words and that helps fix form or it helps, uh, you know, kind of create perspective or a, another solution, that's it. Thank you very much. I don't need to, you know, do a 10 minute story about it. Although that's my natural preference because I'm a talker, right? Um, but just know that, that, you know, less is better and simpler is better. And that's what's going to get not only the point across, but uh, get people to actually not be overwhelmed and take action on it. Uh, number four is unlocking and like unlocking potential being a motivator. Now, here's the kicker, right? Uh, he, most people will say like, you know, in fitness, right? You have to be self-motivated, right? You have to, uh, uh, like people that come to you, you know, they already have to be motivated. I, I don't think that's like, you know, necessarily true. And on, on an average day, most people just aren't, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like the whole, uh, the, the, the thing that people say is like, oh, you're not committed, right? Which is bullshit. But I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, what I mean by that is like, look, on, on any given day, right, any person can be down or up. And some people, like I said, if, if they're having a tougher time getting motivated, it is part of the coach's uh, kind of like job description, essentially, to unlock that, right? You're just unlocking it, right? You're not necessarily creating it. You're unlocking it. And for that, you need to know uh, the client or the person. Remember, I'm going to say, I might say client, but remember how we talked about coaching can be coaching a friend, coaching a, a kid, a son, a, a daughter, whatever, right? Like it, so it, it can fit in a lot of things. But in, in this sense, I'm going to say you need to know that person uh, as far as like what motivates them. What are their desires? Uh, what are their fears? You know, what are their frustrations? And with that said, because, you know, that way you can you can bring it to light. And that remember, you're just unlocking that motivation. And remember why you came here. You know, you told me, you know, wh whether it's fear of, like I said, a disease or having to, uh, uh, you know, like, guess what? Right now, for me, my, my motivator would be to not because I, I just, you know, I just herniated the disc. And it's like, man, and it's for the second time. It's like to not do that again. Right. It's to, to get me away from the pain. Um, and then there's the, you know, but you can unlock my desire and start talking about, you know, Vigorville and what we're creating with Vigor Ground, right? I mean, it, the, the better that you know the person, it is on you, you know, to be able to get the most out of that session or that, that meaning, uh, to fire them up. So you like, that's why once again, I'm going to bring this up, like the art of, you know, storytelling and how to in, intertwine people's desires, uh, fears and desires into stories. I think that's very, very important, um, you know, and, and like I said, some people will go away from pain and some will go toward pleasure. And unfortunately, you know, pushing, getting somebody away from pain is more, uh, more effective, right? That's just, that's just the reality, right? They're like, most people wait till the pain is too big. And then it's like, okay, it's the pain of change is smaller than the pain of where they're at, right? But that's motivation It's just bringing that to light and it's unlocking that versus trying to create the motivation. Yeah. Like you're not going to create the motivation for anybody, but you do have to know the person so that you can unlock it when necessary for them to achieve, you know, that behavior that, that you're trying to get them to, uh, to, to do. Right. And number five is going to connect to that. And that's asking good questions. Wow. If there's anything that, uh, I don't know. There's not many more things effective than asking good questions. And, you know, once you become a great, I would say, active listener, which is probably one of the most important things in communication uh, with teams, with clients, with with anybody really is active listening. It's like asking questions, good questions, and then really listening, actively listening for that what that person is saying. Um, but good questions also uh, bring about the answers to you know, uh, things like what matters to that person, what they're struggling with, what are the obstacles, what are the fears and frustrations and what are the desires? What is, uh, what's the hope? What's the goal? Um, you know, what's the want? And like I said, that's all questioning and, and it, it kind of feeds back in, you know, when it comes to, you know, people talk about sales, 
And I think that 80 percent of, I would say, uh, figuring out how to get somebody to do something is figuring out their why, their motivation. Uh, and you can't do that without compassion, empathy, great questions, active listening. Right. So think about that's a skill set that's learned, you know, I mean, and maybe some people are, are, are better equipped genetically with this or, or whatnot. But the, the, at the end of the day, like that's a, a learned skill set that you can get better at. And, you know, to become a great coach like that's that's something that you definitely got to do. And whether like I said, whether it's reading books about it, uh, whether it's being around people that do it incredibly well. And that's what I, I really try to do is, is put myself around people that do those things well and just observe. And like, I, I'll take notes like, wow, OK, I just I just noticed that, um, you know, whether it's uh, uh, it's finding great things about them and, and, and bringing them to light, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But all of, uh, you know, like I said, if you can guide and ask good questions, uh, then like, man, you're so much of a, a better of a coach, also a better salesman, but like mostly better coach. And uh, one of the things I'd, I'd, I'd have you consider checking out is I've, I probably mentioned it before is motivational interviewing. Now, it's it's actually kind of a little bit of a clinical book um, when it comes to like actually treating addictions. And and really what it what it does is like a two way street as far as, uh, you know, you, you don't you don't coach and tell somebody something or you don't guide like guide the questions. The motivational interviewing does a great job of getting a ton of examples of how to ask these, you know, open-ended questions in a way that doesn't force somebody in a certain direction, doesn't make them feel like you're implying something. Uh, because with addictions, as soon as you start, you know, telling somebody there's something or implying that, you know, they're a certain way, they're going to they're gonna fight back. And this can be any addiction. I mean, uh, it, it's helpful with it because we all have addictions. Guess what? We all have pretty much a social media addiction. But, you know, uh, and it's so helpful, you know, studying that book and reading that book uh, was amazingly helpful. And it, a new edition came out that's just a uh, motivational interviewing for fitness and nutrition. Uh, and I'll put a link in the notes that, you know, so it, it, it really helps guide quality questions to where the person actually figures the next step out for themselves or figures that figures something out for themselves. Right. Uh, you're not you're not trying to you know, you're not telling them that's the case or forcing them in a certain direction. And, uh, and so, you know, and I kind of veered off a little bit, but I wanted to give you guys some resources on, on what's really, really, uh, helped me, uh, as a coach and how you can continue to pursue that. Um, number six is leading by example. Now, look, uh, you know, you don't put, put, put it this way and there's obviously outliers here and, 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 and certain examples that, that will go against the grain of what I'm saying, but it, but in majority of cases, look, People look to you, right? If, if you're in some field um, and you're preaching something, they look for you to lead by example. So, you know, if you're a realtor and, you know, you're selling homes but don't believe in, but don't have a home, kind of goes like, well, you don't believe in having a home, right? But you're telling everybody else to do that. Like, same thing if you're, you know, and you, if you're in fitness and nutrition and you're not in shape, or should I say, you know, there could be something that happened they got you out of shape, you know, I don't know, perfect example, like I, I just got hurt, I can't do certain things, but that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, your behaviors uh, lead by example, so you're staying in shape, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're eating, eating the right way to, to be in line with your goals, like you are what you preach, right, if somebody like just put the mute button on everything that you say, and a person was standing there going like, OK, I'm going to just jot down what this person does every day. Uh, you, it would be in line with the things that you are coaching others or asking others to do themselves. I think this is very important. You know, and I, I think Martin always said, you know, when you go to a dentist with wooden teeth uh, and you wouldn't now, you know, may, maybe you don't know the story behind how that happened. And maybe it was unfortunate, and not their fault and whatever. But, you know, we do we do judge like we judge and we make first impressions. And, uh, you know, I think that you cannot manipulate people to do things or, or should I say you can, but it never turns out good. But you can't inspire people to do things and you inspire people by leading by example and for people watching you to see you do the things that you talk about. Right. And then the thing is, there's also a much deeper trust there uh, when, you know, 
I would say you're in line, right? Like the audio and the video matches. What I mean by that is like, there's a lot of, you know, stuff that happens in this world today where it's like, this is what somebody says. And then behind closed doors, this is what they do. And, you know, like I, there's, there's parts of my life when I was doing that and, and I felt completely out of alignment and, and shit always goes wrong when you do it that way. Right. So when those things are aligned, you live, uh, I don't know, let's just call it that you live in integrity. Um, and not, not only do you feel greater, there's, there's, uh, I don't know, I'm going to call it an aura, but there's, there's an aura of, uh, of good around you that, that people will, will tend to follow. Um, number seven is, is displaying commitment. Now, here's the thing. This is my favorite. I'm, I've probably said this before, you know, what is commitment? Um, and look, co commitment when, when it comes to a client, right? Commitment means you know, being prepared, like being, being on time, doing what you said you do. See, this is a big one, right? Doing what you said you would do. Uh, and when you said you do it, uh, another, another point of commitment is doing what is required and doing it despite of your feelings, emotions, moods, and thoughts. And, uh, uh, so Tim Ungali said that a while back to me, I wrote it down in a journal. I never forgot it. And, um, you know, the thing is to, for your, for your clients to be committed to the process, you have to be committed to your clients, right? And coaching, like truly committed. And that means you got to do what you said you'd do. You got to do it consistently, right? And you got to do it like, hey, you know what? This morning, I uh, had to be, be on a bunch of calls, uh, do a lot of work, you know, be on webinars, sitting, writing. Uh, and I'll tell you what, my, my disc is not happy when I sit a lot right now. Uh, like I'm, I'm actually not really... Uh, <laughs> internally i'm not that happy because i'm i'm feeling it but i'm so focused on shooting this podcast and delivering value uh then i kind of forgot about it right but it, it it's one of those things that you know when you come through and you do the things that you said you do you create trust and then people start committing you know to you but the thing is if you show up late uh you know you're like hey i'm gonna get this done and then you don't um you know you said that you're gonna bring the highest level of service and commitment and look out for that person. And then you don't show up like that. You know, you're not, you're not basically highly committed. And then that person is going to be, it's not, he's not going to be committed to you or what you say or what you ask of them to do. And like I said, this could be a, a you know, a, a investment relationship, like possibly coaching, but it could just be a, a friendship or a, you know, a, a, a collaboration project that's passion based or whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. Like you got to show a level of commitment. And if you remember those three things, if I, you know, if I keep repeating myself, I don't give a shit because this was one that you can remember for life, right? Do what is required. Do what you said you do and do it despite of feelings, emotions, moods, and thoughts. And that last one is so powerful because guess what? Right? What is one of the things that most people talk about? Uh, ah, you know, I was really tired, man. You know, like I had this thought and it was about this and that and the other. So then I just didn't do it. You know, uh, I was feeling really beat down. Uh, I was in a crappy mood. Right. And then that becomes the excuse for not doing it. But that's not committed whatsoever. And uh, a while back, I shot this video and it was about how most people create their identity. And identity means, you know, who you want to be, like who you self, you know, if you think of, 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 of a role model in your life and all areas of life, and you're like, man, I want to be like that person, right? Uh, for my family and my business and my, my body, whatever it may be. And what most people follow is that they get a feeling, right? And that feeling may be tired or jealous or hateful, or whatever. And then, uh, uh, or, or that feeling then creates an action, Right. And then that action, usually if it's coming from a place of scarcity, fear, uh, jealousy, whatever, is usually not a good action. But then that action builds your identity, right? So it goes feeling, action, identity, right? Whereas I believe that the way to go about it is to go decide what identity you want to have and say, hey, what, what type of action would that person take? And then you take that action. And once you take the action, then you get the feeling, right? So he's kind of flipped around. Um, and I think that's something that's important when it comes to that last point of commitment is doing things despite of how you feel because it's what you're committed to. So number eight, coach excellence. 
All right, check this out. So this is, um, you know, you've probably heard me talk about outcome uh, outcome goals versus behavior goals, right? I'm a big fan of uh, behavior goals. And I mean, it's kind of like one of these things that science shows that this is what works better, right? I would say science and real world results. But, you know, outcome goals are things like, uh, you know, I want to lose 25 pounds, right? In the next 90 days, for instance, just throwing some stuff out there. Whereas behavior goals is, um, you know, I'm going to change my morning habit of eating breakfast that's going to consist of X, Y, Z. I'm going to get four workouts in per week. I'm going to drink a gallon of water per day, right? Those are behaviors. So I, can, I can't control the outcome, right? Let me get this straight. So I cannot control the outcome. Now, you know, no one could tell you, hey, you for sure will lose 40 pounds in X, Y, Z amount of time. Right. Because it's based on so many factors, you know, so from genetics to, to, to health history, to amount of dieting, yo-yo dieting that's been done before to uh, health. Right. So maybe getting sick or injured or, you know, whatever it may be. But so nobody can really determine that. Now, you know, there's obviously a better chance if you do certain things or not. But behaviors you can completely control. Like, did you, you know, did you eat? this many, you know, servings of vegetables today? Did you drink a gallon of water? Did you have protein with every meal? Did you get your workout in? Did you eat, you know, uh, 500 calories less than your maintenance? Whatever it may be, depending on where you are in the journey, right? So, but I'm just saying that these are behavior goals. And so coaching excellence focuses on behaviors and it focuses on, you know, doing things exceptionally well. So um, there, there's such a, there's such a big, I, I would say, um, or let's just say there's such an importance of having people be present and really uh, deliberate, right? Like, so deliberate practice, focus, deliberate practice with intent, you know, on, on the things that matter. So details um, and, and improving on those. So the small hinges that swing big doors, the, you know, the one keystone habit, the, the one shift and really getting good at it. That's actually going to create a compound effect and a momentum in your life. So, you know, rather than going like, hey, just come in and just do your squat. And the squat is crappy and, you know, knees are collapsing and, you know, back is rounding and, you know, there's no no coaching cues. You know, th- there's a big difference there, right? Because, like, you might just be focused on, uh, like, hey, put on as much weight on the bar, right? But if you're coaching excellence, then you want that form to be really good and you're progressing it slowly and, you're constantly like bringing attention to certain things that matter and then rewarding them. And we're going to, we're going to talk about the reward part in a second. Um, you know, so if on a day to day you're coaching excellence so that the person is executing with excellence and that's their standard, right? You, you said high standards and uh, not overwhelming necessarily. Cause remember, we're always just helping somebody improve. So it, I, I want, I want you to have a distinction between, uh, you know, like I said, there, the, there's execution, like nobody should feel bad because they can't do something. You give them a little bit more than what they're capable of, right? And uh, same thing again, like it shows that if you make something about 5% more challenging than what they can currently do, that's great because they're going to be, they're going to get really focused doing it and they're going to get better at it, right? If you make it too easy, people get bored. If you make it too hard, people get overwhelmed and frustrated and stressed out. So that's part of the, the, the art of coaching as well, the art and science of coaching uh, you know, giving the person just the right amount of challenge so that it keeps them focused. But then you as a coach have to coach excellence and create the standard, right? It's it's kind of like one of those things when you go to a gym and they have a plank challenge. Like I'm going to bring this one up just because it popped up in my stream the other day, right? And it's like, who can hold the plank the longest? And you got people holding planks, you know, for like 15, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, whatever it may be. Man, at what point in time did that plank not become, you know, was not the plank anymore? And it's probably like a minute or two, right? If you coach the plank the right way, you do like an RKC plank and, you know, keep things on point. Uh, oh, my goodness. Like, there's, you know, nobody's holding the plank for like 10, 20, 30 minutes or whatever. A majority of people, are, there's no way they're doing it. Uh, same thing goes with with a bunch of other things, right? Like uh, I, I had a uh, had a great podcast with Joel Jameson talking about you know uh things like screening movement which are very important like things like the fms sfma and things like you know assess and correct and you know you screen the movement 
and a movement become you know looks great or for instance you know somebody gets a two or three on fms but after 10 minutes of conditioning you know and you're ch- and you're pushing that conditioning you're challenging con- that conditioning you know people revert to faulty movement patterns because they're so tired they can't maintain quality form guess what now we're ingraining in crappy form once you get tired right so see that's not coaching excellence at that point in time you got to either uh you know down regulate you got to take a break you got you know we're not going to go into details of programming but if you're allowing that you're not coaching excellence right because that's that's just pushing through and, and and pretending like you're coaching toughness but for me personally like when a person gets tired i want them to still be crisp right i want them to execute with excellence and when you coach that guess what you coach those behaviors you coach those mindsets, right? Because there's mindsets and there's skill sets. And when you coach both of those at the, that excellent level, right, the, the person is empowered. They're prepared for life. They're focusing on the right things, um, things that they can control versus things that they cannot control. And that makes a humongous difference, right? And I think that, that this is one of those things where you as a coach have to just set a standard, like, hey, what am I, you know, what, what are my standards? What am I going to allow? What am I not going to allow? And really uh, follow through on those, right? We talked about commitment and showing up and, and no doing coach. But like showing up on those at the highest levels at all times. And, and you know, one of the examples that, that I like to give is, um, so for many, many, many years, uh, I ran all of, uh, you know, the group training, like the, the boot camps, the team training that we did. And uh, I worked really long days. I mean, like we're talking 16, 18, 20 hour days with no exaggeration, you know, slept for three hours. And then I have to get up at like 445, you know, five uh, and, and train the morning classes. And, you know, I didn't like trust me how many days I did not feel like it, you know, beat up, tired, whatever. But every time. So I had this little ritual and, uh, you know, it's just kind of like a side story, but maybe it'll make a point. Uh, when I would be driving in in the morning, it's like it's cold, it's dark. I'm like, oh man, it's my you know fifth day in a row sleeping like three hours, three and a half hours. By the way, don't take this in, as a you should do this too example. I'm just I'm just telling my story and making a point. And I had this little ritual where like I'd roll down the window so the cold air's in my face, and I put certain music in, right? And it'd usually be like a a, a, a sequence thing. So first there'll be some hip hop, like usually DMX to get me amped up and just like I'm going hard. And they'll be like one of those motivational uh, speeches if you ever go on YouTube and it's like Arnold talking or E.T. or whatever, right? Like, and it's about five, six minute thing. So I'd, I'd listen to that. I'd park the car in front of the gym and I'd go in the gym, turn the lights on, go back into my car. So see people start coming. And then many a times like I'd run into the gym or do high knees or do some crazy stuff where people would be like, what the, what the fuck is going on with this guy, right? But it'd get people amped up. Now, here, here's, here's the, 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 the kind of the premise of this. I chose that my standard, like I could have walked in and been like, hey, guys, I'm tired. Let's kind of get, get warmed up or whatever, right? Like, but the reality is, is like those people are there for you to get them fired up, not the other way around. And it's like this uh, kind of cyclical thing where like you get them fired up, they fire you up, you fire them up more. And it's just like it keeps going and it's great. But I had to set a standard on like how I show up no matter the fact that like I was tired or I slept three hours or whatever it means. And like at the way that I was going to coach, what energy I was going to bring, would I let people slip? You know, just if I saw a shitty push up and I was tired that morning, what I was going to correct it. Like, no, I was going to coach the crap out of everything. Like if I'm not sweating at the end of two sessions back to back, man, I'm not coaching. Like, I mean, I'm literally sweating coaching. Everybody's getting touched. Everybody's being coached. Even in a 30, 40 person session, I had this goal where every single person would get coached once or twice individually, and then I would do general coaching. So there's this thing called general specific, general general specific, um, that that I do, and I I'll go into that some other time. But the the point of the matter is a standard, right? I decided what standard I was not going to fall below, and and you know and commit to that standard, and I think that's crucial, and when it comes to coaching excellence, like. What you know, it's like I've said this analogy before. It's like a plane on a runway, right? Like if it's a foot to the left, no one sees it, right? No one sees it. But you fly for ten hours, you land in a different country because after ten hours, that foot 
compounds and all of a sudden you're somewhere completely different where you want it to be. And that's how coaching is, right? You're a little bit tired. You let something slip a little bit, you know, um, you're like, oh, Susie's, you know, Susie's, uh, you know, lunge is looking kind of crappy today. You know, maybe she's tired, but hey, so am I. She, she'll be fine. Right. And you let it slide. And then all of a sudden, like every session, you kind of let it slide a little bit. And all of a sudden, six months later, your coaching is not the way it should be. And it's not coaching excellence. So I promise you this, that, you know, I, I talked about passion, purpose and persistence. Persistence is so important. And the consistency of how you do things is who you become. Anybody can do it for a week, eight weeks, 12 weeks. Anybody can do it for 21 days. That's why all this shit like detoxes and all this stuff is promoted like that. But man, like when you can do it for years and when you can do it when it's tough and when you can do it when it's uncomfortable and when you can do it when you don't feel like it and you're tired, that is who you become and that becomes your standard. All right, I got a little bit fired up about that. I lost myself. I blacked out. I blanked out there. Whew, I'm back. All right. So uh, number nine is crediting success. And so we just talked about this a little bit uh, 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 about like always shining the light on positive behaviors um, and crediting success. Like I said, man, a lot of t people have a tough time like crediting them themselves. And, and that's why I love like even with clients, we, we teach them these uh, um, five wins or three wins, uh, depending, depending on how many you want to do every day but at, at the end of every day or at least every week you go and write down your wins no matter which you know it could be like hey i got a little gift for a friend that's a win hey i got a really great workout in today you know you start learning to appreciate and be grateful for the things that you've done and achieved because uh, most people do not do that and so in training in coaching you want to reward success you want to bring it to light and i would say it's even more important to uh, shine a light on behaviors and effort and attitude than it is sometimes on, uh, you know, the outcome. Like there's nothing wrong with like having some, you know, uh, congratulating when somebody looks good, but it, it's, I think it's more valuable and important than what you ingrain as we go like, man, you know what, Susie today, and I'm going to say, you know, man, but like, Hey Susie, you man, today's effort was fantastic. Like, uh, you know, that was that was the best effort I've seen you put in in a long time. If you keep showing up like this, you know, you're going to do fantastic. Like so proud of you. Right. So you congratulate the effort. This is also great with kids. Right. Instead of saying like, hey, you're so smart. You congrat like way to put a lot of effort into solving that problem because then they value the effort rather than valuing their smarts. And then if something becomes really challenging, they quit because. They, they, they think that they're not smart enough, right? But if you value effort, um, then all of a sudden, like they work harder. When it becomes tougher, it become, they work harder. So those are the things like, man, I love the attitude you brought, right? Or great way to problem solve like your nutrition, like way, way to make that switch up, right? So you're congratulating those things. Now, I do things when people reach milestones, uh, you know, they hit the 300 pound uh, deadlift, right? Because, or they hit their like their first chin up and it's like, wow, they hit their first chin up. Like reward that, make a big deal out of it because it is. Write a thank you card. Uh, get you know, get a get an individualized gift that like matters to them. You know, do a like I said, I, I'm I'm a big fan of doing things for people and with people inside of the gym and constantly bringing things to light. Uh, but you know, that's very very important and 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 it's something I want to you know trust me. Like as I'm going through these principles, like I myself am constantly going like, oh wow, you know what I can do more of that. You know, we can do more of that. I'm, you know, as I'm sharing this, I'm so far from, you know, being the the best in the world at this, right? Like, and that's what keeps driving me and keeps me, keeps me going because it, you can never get too good at this, you know? And, uh, and it, it's, it, doing these podcasts is a reminder for me also, it's kind of like talking to myself sometimes. And, and guess what? I got to watch it over too, because I got to make notes for this. <laughs> so it's perfect. But Reward that, reward success, reward milestones, you know, uh, show people appreciation, shine a light on, on the behaviors that they're doing and start doing that every day. You know, I, t I talked to, uh, I think I mentioned this before I was on Jay's podcast. So my, my, uh, my best, one of my best friends in the world, Jay Ferruja, you know, I, I kind of really, uh, he inspired me cause you know, he'd always, uh, uh, you know, we'd always go back and forth and like, what are some things we're doing to improve in life, you know, as human beings. And one of the things that, that I started doing a lot was even with random people, if they do something good that I like really consciously notice it and congratulate it. Uh, and then when I got a haircut in Santa Monica, 
uh, you know, when I was out there visiting Jake. And this lady, like, gave me the best head mas- scalp massage of all time uh, and face massage before I got my hair cut. And, like, for the last 10 minutes I was, as I was sitting there, I was reminding myself, don't forget to let her know. Don't forget to let her know. And, and at the end, I was just like, hey, like, wow, that was the most amazing. Like, you, like, the detail, like, you, the details that you uh, – took with like the all the creams and the massage was incredible like you really took care of me thank you so much like that was one of the best um face massages i ever got like and she was so appreciative i mean like literally started tearing up and and it's it's the the thing is not only will that because i i said something nice about that behavior that behavior is going to get reinforced but man it just makes a person feel good isn't it? it like if somebody does something good bring it to light and I've, I've tried to really make a habit out of this and I'm, I'm still catching myself to, to get consistent with it. Um, but, but Jay was one of the guys that inspired me to, to really get better at that. Um, and it kind of falls in line with how, you know, I'm, we're talking about coaching, but these are things that just help in life and communication and relationships, period. You know, so I want you to keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to skip like this, man, I could talk about some of these things for so long cause I love this shit. Um, but number 10 is, Taking responsibility. Uh, you know, just remember, like, I, I see this a lot. And, and look, there's, you know, it's not necessarily a black and white thing, but, uh, you know, blaming others, right? Even though sometimes, like, uh, you know, other people, like, for, forget about what the other person didn't do. Like, look at yourself and ask yourself what you could have done better. And when it comes to coaching, you know, being quick to blame others Number one, it creates a rift between the coach and the client, right? It, be, it creates a rift between the coach and the client. And at the end of the day, that, that, that's the, the, the thing that you absolutely don't want for, because for there to be a healthy coaching relationship, you know, you have to have what's called, I call psychological, well, I call, it's, it's called psychological safety, which is where both people can come and express their feelings and maybe some, you know, maybe even some judgments and stuff and construct, let's just say criticism, uh, and are able to work through that and come out in a better place together, right? So meaning you're, you're willing to obviously hear the tough things so you can improve and not come back next time and not share or not do stuff. Like that's what psychological safety is. And it's actually been proven that the best companies, the teams, uh, the, the teams and the best companies in the world are not made up of the people that are individually the best, the, the teams that excel the best are the ones that have psychological safety and work together. And it's the same thing in a coaching environment. Now, creating blame creates a rift. And then basically you got a lot of pointing fingers and, and very little problem solving and innovation. And with, co- with, with, with coaching, it's the same thing. Guess what happens when blame is put on someone else? It's a threat. And then how do people retaliate from threat? Well, fight, flight, or, uh, uh, fight, flight, or freeze, right? So you don't get anywhere. Whereas with, you know, if you take responsibility and go like, hey, you know, uh, I feel that like I, I let you down with not, you know, not uh, working hard enough to find maybe some different strategies to get you where you want to go. So I commit to, you know, digging even deeper and finding better ways to communicate with you, finding better ways to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, maybe go out of the box to find what's going to work best for you. Because all I, at the end of the day, what I'm committed to is helping you reach your results. Now, I, you know, I do believe you have to take responsibility for not taking action and executing on some things that you committed to, right? But that it, it's one of it, it's a difference when you shine a light on yourself and go like, hey, what are what are things that I can do better? And these are the things that I take responsibility for. And let's be honest, like, is anyone in a place where you know you can't get better? And and this is what I this is what I hate, right? So you'll see this in the industry a lot, where it's like I'm only taking on really committed clients. Like, what does that even mean? Like, I, I have no idea what that means. Like, basically, there's really nobody would be having clients because everybody's talking about that. Everybody, like, listen, the, the reason that your people hire a coach is because they have trouble with commitments um, and following through on them for whatever reasons, like no judgment. Guess what? Like, man, I got a problem with in certain areas of my life to committing and following through. And so I reach out and, and get help right? Coaches, mentors, uh, programs, whatever it may be. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, I, I want to move in that direction. So whatever that's, whatever it takes, right? So just remember, like, take responsibility. Don't, don't shed blame. Because uh, 
once again, don't be that person who goes like, I only work with crazy committed people. Like, listen, crazy committed people usually are more A-type and can get a lot of shit done themselves, you know, in, in, in the areas that they're crazy committed to. <laughs> they don't need as much help, right? And, and so as a coach, to me, that's what's happening is you're taking the, the spotlight off of your own inability to coach, right? You need to become a better communicator. You need to be better at thinking out the box of being an innovator to, to finding different ways to help people that have unique problems and, and obstacles and struggles. Uh, because you know what? You have those same obstacles, maybe just in a different area of your life, right? So, uh, you know, a, a while back, I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop being the person that's like, man, this person just can't follow through. And I'm a, first, I'm going to exhaust how much better I can get at those things and help them. Now, at the end of the day, yeah, maybe it's not a right fit. Maybe that person will not follow through. But here's the thing. If, if you look at yourself and ask yourself how you can get better, then you keep improving. So it's good for you either way. And you become better for the client. So it's good for them. And you know what? At the end of the day, if some, some of the, the, the relationships as far as coaching goes doesn't work out, that's fine. But you at least you end on a good note because you know what? There's not this blame and pointing. And you can go honestly say, hey, I don't think I'm the best person to help you. Maybe I can refer you to someone else or I can help you in some other way. And I think that's what a true coach should do. So that's a huge one. And so the last two, uh, number 11 is challenge the process, you know, so, uh, and what I mean by that is challenging the system. So a lot of people, they have frameworks, right? And they, they work within these frameworks. So these containers where it's like, Hey, this is how it's got to be. And I, and I love, you know, I love systems and templates and st- things like that. But the thing is when you get stuck in a system too much, then what you end up doing is go like, well, this doesn't work. Well, I've tried it this way and this doesn't work. And in your mind, instead of like going like, well, how can it work? What can I do to make it work? Right? What can I change to maybe see a different angle here? Right? So you ask yourself, remember we always said like asking good questions? Well, this is questions you got to ask yourself. But go out of the, the system, like be innovative. Right? Create and solve problems. It's like ask yourself how you can solve the problem versus going like, well, it's not working within the confines of this framework or container. Okay, cool. Change it, flip it on its head. You know, like a great book by Adam Grant, who's written a, 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 a number of my favorites. One of them is uh, Give and Take. Another one is Originals, which is uh, I, I read some months back. It talks about like, you know, how the only people that really challenge, the, the people that innovated, the people that challenge the status quo. And in coaching, it's the same thing, right? One, learn from people that are like out there and wacky and like just just learn from some people that are successfully doing things and, um, you know, doing it, out, you know, for, for what it's worth, you know, out of the box or make the box bigger or whatever. You know, people say a lot of different shit, but, you know, like don't, you know, don't put yourself in this mold, but just it, like think about the purpose of the end, the end goal. And then like if you got to find ways around it, you know, do that. Become a creative thinker, become a lateral thinker. And uh, I got a little pro- actually, I got, I, got a, I got a little problem for you to solve. And uh I'm gonna see if I remember this one, but but uh I'm gonna pause there for a second to see if you can solve it yourself. But you know, lateral thinking, right? You got a uh you're driving a two seater car, right? And you're and it's a it's a humongous uh it's a humongous rainstorm. And you stop on the side of the road and there's three people, right? There's three people, and one of the people is your best friend. Uh another one is an old lady that needs to get to the hospital. And the third one is uh, the woman you fell in love with, all right? Don't judge this drill. So just go along with this, right? So you can only basically, you can only pick, put, put one person in the car with you, right? You can only take one person. And that's it. Like, who do you pick? Like, who do you take in the car with you? Uh, because like I said, the woman that you fell in love with, you know, that might be your wife in the future, whatever. One is the best friend in the world. If you leave them, that's not going to be a good thing. And hey, the, the old lady needs help, needs to get to the hospital. So what do you do? I wish I had the little countdown time. We do get like 20, 30 seconds here to see what your answer is. Yeah, Gene's doing it. <laughs> so here's the thing. Notice that like, where's your mind going? This is one for the party. This is a good, it's a good, it's a good question for the party. You might be the highlight of the party. When everybody's lit up and everybody's clapping. 
So I don't, you know, I don't know where your, your mind goes, but most people ask this question. They're like, oh man, I, I take the lady, uh, but you know, but then I, I miss out on love and my friend gets pissed at me, whatever. Right. But here's some lateral thinking for you. Here's, here's the answer. And first of all, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that I didn't get this right. All right. I fucked up on this one. I'm not going to pretend to be smarter. Uh, but essentially what, what the best solution is, you give the car keys to your friend. He takes the old lady to, to, to the hospital to, to get help. You stay in a rain with uh, this woman you fell in love with. And obviously, you know, ha- everybody lives happily ever after. Now, you know, be completely honest, right? Be completely honest if when you were doing this drill, if that's, that's what came to your mind. I would have, I mean, I, I'd be pretty sure that's not how you were thinking. But it's because we're patterned. Right. We have pattern thinking like we don't think laterally. Like what are all like what are some crazy solutions? Like, let me just think outside of the box. Right. And and it's practice like you got to There's a skill set of, of, of thinking like that, which is why I'm such a big fan of reading books of incredible thinkers. Right. Because I get a little piece of the, their perspective. I get a little piece of how they problem solve. And I love being around it. Like, I mean, that's why I've, you know, uh, sometimes invested, but like why, you know, this year uh, I've, I've met, like, you know, when I was a 212, I met a lot of my, my mentors and, um, uh, you know, uh, from, from like Ryan Holiday and Tim Ferriss to, you know, I, I went and invested a lot to have a meeting with uh, um, Gary Vaynerchuk. And earlier this year I was in, uh, uh, you know, in Necker Island with, uh, with Richard Branson and a lot of the top uh, entrepreneurs and get, I start, you know, I ask a lot of questions to figure out how they think, um, because I want to understand the thinking part behind it. It's like the, the foundation behind it, not just the surface, uh, the surface part of it. So hopefully that drill open up your eyes. And next time you have a problem, uh, uh, you, you can, you can, you can look at it from different perspectives. Uh, there's also like this, uh, really good book. It's called decisive. Uh, I think by Chip, Chip and Dan Heath, which, those guys just write awesome books, period. But it, it's a whole book on like how to make decisions, right? Uh, and there's and there's a lot of books on on uh, how to think better, lateral thinking. Actually, I'm gonna just post a bunch of them uh, that I've read through, so I don't so I don't don't just uh, blabber on. But that one is very very important. Will help. We'll find it very helpful for you in all, all areas of life, especially in coaching, especially in business, um, and and anything else. And last but not least, is inspire shared vision. Um, and this goes for anything, but definitely with the client. You know, when you, you, when you are fully passionate and believe and see, like, uh, you know, who that person can become, and that you, sh- you know, you also share with them, like, that you've helped people just like them um, achieve, you know, what you're helping them achieve. Man, people buy into that vision. You know, like, and and it goes the same thing, like for you know, for vigor ground, like, man, I, and so, you know, even with like, for instance, I can't tell you enough. Uh, uh, like when it comes to vigor ground, like, man, I daydream. I, I mean, for, for, you know, a decade, I've constantly had, like, I visualize, you know, uh, this, this, um, I don't know, I call it a dream or end vision or whatever, you know, me and Jay talked about like what, what's more powerful act like goal setting or like visualizing a vision. Like, and I, I really follow this vision. It's not always this very, you know, strict numbers thing, whatever, man. It's just like, I see it. And I talk a lot, you know what I mean? Everybody that knows me know I talk a lot, but here's why I also talk, right? It, when, when I talk, a lot of times I'm clarifying my own vision. It's almost like I'm talking it out, right? And, and I share this with a lot of people because it makes it clearer for me, but it also helps them buy in. Like, you know, what are we trying to build here? You know what I mean? And, 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 and you got to do that with your clients too, where you're, you're helping them see and, and, and visualize what can be, who they can become based on the things that they've told you and then reinforcing it with like, Hey, I, you know, I've, I've helped people, you know, just like you, like achieve those things. I believe, like, I believe we can achieve this together. Like this can happen, like help them buy into the vision because, uh, you know, uh, like it can, constantly brings me back to, you know, the conversation I had with Martin Rooney and this is like, like 10 years, I've known Martin for over 10 years. And, you know, now we do, we do business together in many ways. And, uh, and, you know, when you talked about like the combine and when, you know, they had like, uh, at Parisi, they had like, uh, I think seven or eight years in a row or something like the top combine guys, right. At the, at the NFL combine, like the fastest dudes and, and doing the drills and was like, well, what did you guys do different? Right. 
And it was like they didn't have this crazy special drill or a different exercise or some machine or just something that like was so unique, right? But what Martin said is like, man, you know, you know what was different is I made those guys believe that they can be the fastest, that they, they, they can make it. I helped them believe that they can do it. Right? So you see, it's like if you can help people believe and see it, man, there's nothing more like there's nothing more powerful that you can do than do that. And it's shit like sometimes, you know what, like you got to help yourself believe it. Like what is it going to take for you to see and believe this? Right. Because that's like that's that's our power. Our power is to be able to convince people to believe in a, in a better future. Right now, of course, like it's, it's our it's our job to help them get there to execute, to know that it's going to take work and persistence. But still, it starts with seeing it. Right. And so just know that it's like help people buy into a vision, inspire a shared vision, like how you can get there together so that everybody wins. And at the end of the day, you know, coaching is I think one of the descriptions of coaching for me is, you know, helping people win. Right. Um, and then my question is like, well, what is a win for you? Right. And, and what is a win for you with your body? What is a win for you in your business? What is a win for you uh, with your relationship? What is a win for you with purpose and connection and uh, spirituality? Right. Because the thing is like, OK, cool. Whatever you hire a coach for, if it's in one of those areas or if it's more specific, if it's marketing, if it's sales, if it's, hey, you want to build a gym because you're purposeful about fitness and coaching and helping other people get there. I mean, that's what I do. Right. I help people win in that. I help people win in the gym to change their body, change their mind. I help people in business change their businesses so they can build a career that they love. That's purposeful. That's that's a, a profitable, profitable, passionate. You know what I mean? But the thing is, there's always there's a win. And everybody has in their in their in their mind's eye. If you close your eyes. Right. If you close your eyes, you say, OK, what is a win for me? What does that look like? What does it feel like? Right. And everybody has that. If they just dig deep enough. And so with that said, coach helps people win. Now, this, the, the, the principles that I covered today, the 12 principles of coaching excellence. And please, like, remember this word, excellence, right? And, and a lot of ex- excellence is connected to extraordinary. And know that extraordinary is like the ordinary done extra well. Details matter, right? It's not some fancy shit. It's like the things that I just mentioned, but putting... Uh, Focus, uh, intent, and the highest standard behind it. And when you do those things, you will be successful. I promise you this. Like, I mean, I'm huge on, you know, I'm huge on uh, influence and marketing and sales and things like that because they matter. But I promise you at the end of the day, foundation of coaching, if you become excellent at these things that I just mentioned, your business will improve. And like you, like, you know what? And and the business may be, like I said, I, I didn't want this to be, uh, just a, if you're a trainer for like this is for human beings right now if, if you're in the business of having more fulfillment more giving like helping people achieve more because if they you know it's like Zig Ziglar said right you help people get more uh, uh, the more you help people get what they want the more you get what you want right and, and and this is absolutely true and like I said the secret of living is giving baby and and, and coaching is giving it's adding value to people's lives. And like I said, it doesn't mean somebody exchanges money with you, right? It could be it could be the kid that's down and and you get an opportunity to coach him for 10 minutes and pick him up and, you know, make him believe in themselves. It, it's, it could be like in, in a group training session where you coach somebody to get a, 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 a really good rep in and, and have them feel better than ever and congratulate that. It could be so many different things. You're coaching every single day. The things that I mentioned today could be making somebody's day you're going to Safeway and say, you know, some of the, a, a nice thing to the clerk there that looks like they're having a shit day. And, you know, you spend two, three minutes talking to them and you make it better. Th- that is all coaching excellence. And you can and you can work on it every single day, no matter where you are, uh, no matter who you're with. Right. You can implement these principles and you can become better at it. So, man, I realize like I lose time when I talk about coaching. I get so fired up about this shit. Uh, if I missed anything, I will put it in the comments section. Guys, if you love uh, the podcast, if you know, if you enjoy it, please go over to iTunes. You know, leave an honest comment, um, leave a review, and also, you know, if you like video stuff, man, go over and subscribe to YouTube and the channel. We put all of them on, on up there uh, uh, for for the best comments and reviews. I will be sending out 
what I call my, my gift packages. Uh, sometimes it might be a bigger shirt. Sometimes it might be some honest supplements. Sometimes it might be some training gear that I, that I think is dope. Um, but either way, uh, please do that. Love and appreciate you for listening. I can't tell you uh, how grateful I am to, to have some years and be able to share, uh, you know, uh, just experiences in my life and, and knowledge to hopefully help you in yours and your journey. So tune in next time. I will see you on a Vigor Life podcast. Coach Luca is out.